Hi there, Martin here from Daily Environmental. I've been asked to do a video on what chemicals you can use in your grain store pre-harvest. For those of you not in the know, when you empty a grain store um, with all of your crops sold from the harvest from the year previous, uh, you are leaving behind all sorts of gubbins, which insects absolutely love. Sort of broken grains, grain spills that may have gone into the tunnel or got onto the catwalk, um, or even on top of the purlings. Um, you, uh, you're leaving yeast, funguses, dust, that sort of good detritus that bugs absolutely adore. And they, they create these mini infestations where you've got infestable material with just a few bugs in it, and they're just ready and waiting for the lovely hot grain from this year's harvest to be loaded in on top of them so they come up and infest that and uh, make a good old mess and ruin your profits. So people put down an insecticide before harvest to make sure that those bugs are no more so that when they put in the hot good grain nothing gets crawling into it. So let's get cracking into this thing. It's 2021 which means that Reldan 22 the old organophosphate made by Dow AgroSciences is no more. That was deregistered in 2019, I think. Um, and so the use up period is well and truly over. And that shouldn't be used at grain stores anymore. The organophosphates that we're left with are both made by Syngenta. Um, and they're both pyrimiphos methyl based, if that means anything to you. We've got a spray and we've got a smoke. And both of these come with caveats. So listen closely. I'm going to start with the smoke, why not? A lot of people use these incorrectly uh, and they use just these. Uh, so they, um, they clean out their grain store and then they put in a load of smokes. There's a little wick in here, you light the top and poof, it all comes out an insecticide or smoke, kind of like a firework. Um, what it's very good for is getting into all of the cracks and the crevices, the nooks and the crannies and the unreachable areas. So if you've got a complicated bin store, if you've got an air tunnel which has been causing a problem or um, under floor aeration, that sort of thing, then you can get smoke into all of those, uh, all of those areas. Um, the problem is, is this does a lot of knocking down, a lot of killing of adults and larvae, but it doesn't leave anything in the way of residues. The residue that it does leave is actually a bit of a smut, which, the, um, which, which doesn't feel particularly food safe, but hey-ho. Um, so the, uh, the problem is it doesn't work on eggs. So you're killing all the adults and the larvae, but the eggs that are left behind they're ready to hatch out again. There's no residue to knock them down once they turn into larvae and pupate and then turn into adults ready to infest your lovely new grain. So you can't really use these on their own. You should really use a good old spray and then use this as a sort of a flushing chemical to uh, knock down the, 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 um, the adults and the larvae or get them out of the nooks and crannies and force them onto a residual insecticidal barrier that you've laid down before. Um, so yeah, that's the way that this is really um, misused. We don't use them very often. It's um, it's as much of anything a bit of a fire hazard. So uh, uh, with uh, grain dust being more combustible and coal dust, you can sort of tread carefully with this one. Um, but there you are. It's there, and it is an organophosphate that is available to use. You've got to be very careful when you're using it because organophosphates are fairly gnarly chemicals. Um, there is also a spray available, which is Actelic 50 EC. Um, the older amongst you will remember the actelic dust that was a wonderful compound that you could just sort of scatter into grain. Um, unfortunately, that's gone um, and we're left with this liquid. And then uh, the problem with this liquid is it's no operator exposure. It has to all be done sort of remotely. Um, a lot of test subjects can attest to this, myself included, that the, uh, the fall off after using organophosphates is fairly slow, so you use it and it stays in your system for quite a long time. Um, so, uh, so yeah, this means it's remote application only. You need to use it on sort of a, a boom sprayer or a batch sprayer and it goes on to uh, green as it goes through a conveyor or up an elevator or something like that. Um, and uh, which, which works extremely well, it's a grain admixture which will give you some long-term protection for long-term storage. Um, but there's all sorts of caveats that it comes with. Uh, this, is, this isn't so much a label, it's a blooming book, uh, and it's, uh, it's been stuck on the front. Make sure you read it to, uh, to make sure you're following all of the rules. And, uh, and of course you need the correct training, that's PA12 for the UK, uh, for batch applications. So the next one I want to get into is the pyrethrins and the pyrethroids. So we've got here, 
we've got organophosphates, and here we've got the pyrethroids. What's the difference? I hear you cry. Well, the organophosphates, um, it's what you call an anticholinesterase insecticide. Uh, so in everybody's nerve endings, there is something called cholinesterase, which is an enzyme which allows chemical communication between two nerves. Um, and what this does is it essentially sticks chewing gum in the lock of the enzyme uh, to make sure that it can't do its thing with the chemicals that are, are traveling between the, uh, between the, the nerve endings. Um, and that means that uh, the nerves can't communicate. Uh, it ends up uh, with the, the subject having paralysis and, uh, and eventually the metabolism shuts down and it dies. So it's a, it's a nerve agent. Nerve agent of a different kind is the, uh, uh, the pyrethroids. Um, which are called axonic excitoxins. What they do is they, they hold open one of the gates on the nerve endings and so too much chemical goes through and for the same effect, paralysis and metabolism shutting down. Um, the, uh, the really big difference practically um, is that if you get resistance to one, then you can always use the other, which is probably a good thing that the organophosphates are still hanging around. But, uh, but the, uh, the other big practical difference is um, this one is mixed with a synergist. All of the uh, pyrethroids and pyrethrins are mixed with a synergist. What does that mean? It means it's got a chemical in it which, which makes it difficult for the insects to metabolize the insecticide. Uh, it's called piperonal butoxide um, and it's not in any of the, uh, the organophosphates, which means this needs to be a lot more concentrated um, to be able to have the same effect. The way that I always talk about it is this is like killing them with a cudgel and this is like killing them with a series of paper cuts. So you don't actually need as much insecticide, which is, is why we use um, so much of the, uh, the pyrethroids. Um, there's a difference here as well. Um, we're talking about the pyrethroids. The organic version is called pyrethrins. Why is it called a pyrethrin and not a pyrethroid? Well, it comes directly from the chrysanthemum flower. Uh, this is chrysanthemum extract, which has insecticidal properties, and it is entirely water-based. Um, it's available for organic treatments in organic stores, um, with a, a fair few rules and regulations around how you use it. Uh, best to bone up on your um, organic association or organic auditors um, uh, regulations. What do you call them? Guidelines. Thank you for um, uh, for using insecticides. Um, it doesn't have much of a residual value. There are, uh, I like this one, it's called Aquapie, um, and it's entirely water-based. Um, and uh, I like it because it's got several different rates of application. If you want to have some residual effect, then it's got a rate of application for that. If you want no residual effect, it's got a rate of application for that. So it's quite a versatile little chemical. Um, this can also be uh, thermal fogs. Some of you may still have thermal fogs hanging around. Um, from old CIPC days, make sure it's well cleaned, by God. Um, and, uh, but the only problem is because it's water-based, you don't really get a fog coming out of the end with the thermal fog, it's more of a steam. Um, so it may well be worthwhile adding an organic vegetable glycerin or something like that to um, use it as a tracer to make sure you can see where you're going with your fogger. If you can't do that, then it's just down to the maths of using it at the correct application rate for the meters cubed that you're trying to do. So that's one organic treatment that we could do. I'm just going to take a little break from the pyrethroids and the pyrethrins to give a shout out to Diatomaceous Earth as well, um, which is uh, available for organic stores. Um, it's, uh, it's a physical control rather than a chemical control. Um, Diatomaceous Earth is called that because it's made out of diatoms from old seed beds. Uh, if you don't, sorry, seedbeds, old seabeds that have dried up. Uh, if you don't know what diatoms are, go back to your GCSE biology. Um, it's uh, tiny phytoplankton that live in the sea. And when their skeletons dry out, it's almost pure silicon dioxide. Um, it's quite abrasive. So what it does is it actually scratches the cuticle on the outer layer of the insect and they dry out. So it's a physical control, no resistance to this one. Um, and also uh, it's good for you, you can eat it. <laughs> this is um, uh, literally one that's from Peru. Uh, it's not cleared as an insecticide in this country. We got it because we're curious and we wanted to test it in the lab. Um, but uh, yeah, the ones that you can use in your grain store should have no traces of um, heavy metals in them. So you've got to be sure to, uh, to check the chemical analysis profile of it. Is that complicated? It's probably too complicated. Anyway, if you need organic doing, just, just call us. We'll sort you out. Right, the inorganic. Inorganic is not the term you should use if you're a chemist, but yeah, the ones that aren't organic. Um, 
They are called pyrethroids as opposed to pyrethrins because they're chemically synthesized rather than being from a natural source. Um, we've got two that we really reach for. Um, one of them is made by Bayer, same as um, Aquapi. Um, and this is, uh, has the synergist in it. And then also this has the synergist in it. And it's, it's made by, um, it was made by Arista, uh, but it's now made by UPL because uh, United Phosphorus have just bought Arista, making it the fourth biggest agrochemical supplier in the world. Fairly exciting stuff and nice to see new players entering the market. Um, so uh, yeah, re these are reasonably interchangeable. Um, we actually prefer using the talisma because there's, um, there's a certain amount of uh, dynamism that it comes with when it comes to grain admixture. Um, both of these do the job when it comes to spraying an empty grain store, but when it comes to grain admixture, you can actually use twice as much of this as you can of this. Um, you can get right up to the MRL. So if you've got infested grain, it can be an extremely powerful tool in the toolbox. Um, yeah, I think that's everything that I need to tell you about what grain chemicals are available to, uh, to use in your grain stores. Unless, unless you're one of the adventurous farmers that have invested in a ULV sprayer, um, in which case you can get ULV products as well to get directly onto the grain to give you about a year's worth of, um, of protection. Uh, so this one is Talisma, there is also a, you know, a KOV or ULV um, preparation. Um, and uh, yeah, they're, they're perfectly acceptable things to do. I was only slightly worried about the amount of grain weevil that we see coming out of um, uh, ULV treated grain. There's a certain suspicion in our quarters um, that it may not have 100% efficacy against them. But that is entirely anecdotal um, and we haven't done any tests on it at all. Um, all I can say is we see the end results, things gone bad and we, we're starting to see that more and more often. So yeah, these are the ones that you've got. Um, of course, before you apply any of these, you should have a good understanding of what's going on in your grain store um, and you should have some, uh, some insect traps that go into an empty store before you do anything at all because it may not be necessary to treat. You might, your hygiene might be fantastic. Um, and uh, I'm going to do an entirely separate video on uh, insect traps. So I hope that made sense. You got your pyrethroids, you got your organophosphates. Organophosphates are used very sparingly and for very specific things. Pyrethroids are a lot more versatile. And uh, um, the organic treatments, you've got your diatomaceous earth and you've got your pyrethrins. Um, there's a lot more to it, <laughs> an awful lot more to it. It's not just spraying and praying. This is just an outline of the chemicals that you can use. I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope this has been informative. Um, if you have any questions at all, get in touch with us at DV Environmental. Um, we're more than happy to take your call and uh, just talk you through it. I have, uh, I have no worries with that whatsoever because we just, we just love talking about these things. Take care. See you soon. Bye-bye.